Hi, I'm John Mortimer, and I'm going to be talking to you about how I apply the iceberg model when I work in organizations. It's a key concept that I use with managers and leaders when I help them to understand how they can work differently and how they can see their organization so that they can then start to see it from different perspectives. And this is a core element of systems thinking. What's the paradigm that we use when I would ask the question, how do we see and understand organizations? People draw all sorts of things, but typically the way that they see an organization work is like a machine. It's got inputs, it's got processes, it's got outputs. Managers are there to control the work and to make sure that people do the right thing. And they have a, an overview as, as to what's going on. The way that we see an organization working this way is very often in a formal way is that we will draw the hierarchical diagram and that's a way of identifying the machine type of organization where we're split up into departments we have silo working employees follow procedures now this method here is what i use when i go into an organization to help it to change the first step is to help people to understand where they are. How did we get to this place in our way of working? What are the concepts? What are the things that we have done? What are the activities that we have done that have caused us to get to where we are today? Once we understand that, we can then move to the next phase, which is the experiment, and then after that, the prototype. But let's start off with the understand. What do I do with managers and leaders at this phase? Well, the next step in the uh, video is that you're going to see me going through exactly what I go through with a manager or leader after I work with them for a while. And they're the ones that actually create this document. And what we're going to be doing is following the iceberg model. Uh, the iceberg model, roughly speaking, is what are those things that are visible in the organization and how do we analyze beyond what we can see into the patterns in the workplace? We go down and look at the structures and the connections uh, and the way that we've set those up. And then of course we look at the mental models and the assumptions that we have made about the way of working. Now you're gonna see me creating the diagram. And this example is a public sector, a relatively transactional service. And the reason for using this is that this is the same approach that I use in any type of service, whether it's public or private. So that with the planning service, there are various key things that came out from our learning. And what we're going to have at the bottom here is we have the, the summary of what the flow looks like and all the learning that we got from the flow from the workflow, looking at that, talking to people, etc., listening to uh, the impact of the customer. We try and stand back from that, from the detail of that, and have a look at what are the key aspects of this flow. What we do then is the manager starts to put those major characteristics of the flow into this diagram. And where we started from is we started with, well, the first things that we do is we write everything down. And then we do lots of checking. We make sure that we audit everything all the time. Uh, and the writing everything down, where did that come from? That's interesting because the reason that we do that is that we've got to cover our backs. We've got to make sure that we don't get criticized. And as a manager, I've got to control my staff to make sure that they're always doing what I think is the right thing. I can't see them all the time, so I've got to make sure that they write everything down. And this really is a focus on activity. That's actually what I'm doing as a manager. What the basic design of the service was all about is really about the way that we standardize everything and that we use standards in 
all parts of the design. It's really important to the manager because um, it makes it far easier to control stuff when you've got standards. And then when you've got new stuff and you want them to work in the same way, well, guess what? Because we had a turnover of staff, using standards really helps with that. There was also an issue in the council where no member of staff should have been doing anything different to any other. So there was a strong element of everyone doing the same thing. No one should be doing it better or worse than anyone else. One of the things about planning service is that it can be very often criticised within the council because of the way it works and the kind of work that it does. But it wasn't just about that. It was also about making things more efficient. Making the work more efficient, costs had to be reduced every year. And the other characteristic of the service that was very evident to everybody that this was a functional design. We were all chunked up into various groups that did one part of the work. That functional design led to the use of targets um, for each element of the flow. And the use of targets was linked to the focus on the activity, so there was an attitude of compliance. And the attitude of compliance was both with the staff and it was also with the service within the service design of the process itself. And where did that come from? Well, that came from the legislation and the guidance. And as you go further up the page, you see that you go deeper into the system design and you go deeper into the manager's attitude and the manager's beliefs. And at the end of this, what we ended up doing was coming up with some of the key aspects of the way that the managers thought about the work and how they thought it should be designed. So what were those key thoughts? Well, the first one was digital is always good. Standardization. This is about standardization, making the service efficient. This is about understanding the service as a machine and this is about protecting myself as a manager within the organization so that when we get criticism and when we get feedback we can always say that we did it that way because we followed our rules. At the end of the understand phase I will have completed this with the manager and from that point the manager can look at that and probably understand this whole picture for the first time. And the way that we've developed this is using the systems thinking iceberg model. Down here we have the work and we have what you can actually see when you look at the service. And here you have a look, you see actually how the service has been designed. This is the thinking and the preconceptions that the managers of the organization have. And this is the way that the manager thinks and believe the work should be done. And as you go further down, you'll find that all aspects of the design can be linked together. So that once that's understood and we work with the manager to change these at this level, then what happens is that the design of the service here suddenly looks out of place and immediately can be designed into a different design. And from that, you get a very different design down here of the actual service itself, the actual visible part of the service. And of course, the outcomes for the customer are then completely different. And the way that the staff work within that service is also very different. That was an ex one example from one organization. And what's really interesting is how common the diagrams are when I sit with leaders in different organizations. They are very similar to each other. And that shows that we actually work with very similar paradigms. And we start to 
change the organization from the mental models and what does that look like well it looks different each time but in reality it focuses on the customer first it starts with them and it starts with what matters to them it starts with the purpose driven by the customer and that's the difference so when we do that we then start to redesign the way that people work and the processes that they use and we start to delegate decision making that's operational down to teams of people and of course the departments that we've created in the silo working kind of dissolves into cross-functional teams so people start to work together across departments so the hierarchy and the structures that you've seen before tend to merge into an operational horizontal way of working and that's very powerful and that's actually quite different because what happens is that people's roles change people's roles aren't fixed anymore they're much more fluid and flexible one way I like to see it is that we've started off looking at explicit ways of understanding organizations and we move across to look at implicit more complex ways of looking at organizations and the way that that tends to manifest itself is with networks of people and those networks change depending on what we're looking at and what we're trying to do and that's the iceberg model and I use this with managers and leaders when it's appropriate for them to go into that level of depth. I don't use it at the beginning. I use it when it's appropriate. So I hope that's been informative and interesting. And that was just, of course, a very brief introduction. There's a lot more around it uh, that I do. So anyway, thank you very much for watching.